Hey everybody, welcome to the field. It's a beautiful day here on a Saturday morning and I've already put several packs through the airplanes, but I'm excited to share with you that I finally got things sorted on the Fokker D8. Oh, not D8, the Fokker D6. I'm working on a Fokker D8. But uh, so today I'm gonna show you guys how it flies and we're gonna go over real quick just what I think happened and what I've done to fix it. So let's talk about that. So as you can see, the uh, the D6 is looking really nice. Um, and this, I've actually flown this already once today, and uh, I mean every every little detail part that I've put onto this is doing really good. It's holding up well, holding up well to flight. And uh, really, the only thing that I've done is replace the uh, the speed controller using before was from a different company that I had I had picked up the speed controller years ago and um, several of these speed controllers have gone bad over the last two years now and so I've been slowly replacing them um, so I'm using a ZTW Beals uh, 80 amp ESC from uh, Buddy RC and it's flying the airplane just fine um, I used an old 4Cell 5000 that uh, flew the airplane just fine and so now i'm going to use a brand new one <laughs> so i'm not risking a, a, a new pack uh, on this flight so i'm going to get a camera on the airplane and let's go fly okay So given how relatively heavy this airplane is for its size, it does fly fairly fast, but that's okay. It handles the speed just fine. It's not too terribly twitchy, but you know, using the rudder, the rudder is quite sensitive because it's a full, fully flying rudder. So when you get into your turns, you don't really need that much. So I'm gonna bring it down low so you guys can see. Just a really good presence in the air, good colors, good visuals. Don't need to do anything too crazy. So that's moving the stick in like an eraser amount. So pretty good responsiveness to deal with some wind buffeting. That's about half throttle. That's feeding a little bit of right rudder, keeping the wings level as I come around. This is a, again a 670 kV motor and I'm swinging a 16.6 prop on four cell. I'm getting probably about four or five minutes of flying time as max here on a 5,000 four cell pack, which is fine. It's all I need, especially with these warbirds. Now, the air is definitely not as smooth as it was when I flew this earlier today. But keep in mind that I'm also still getting to know this airplane. This is one of the first times I've been able to fly a full pack through it. Thank you. Two minutes. 
two minutes left on my five minute flight timer. I need to start thinking about landing, but uh, really only if the sky was a little bit busy. This is definitely the, uh, the longest flight I've had so far. Last flight was uh, three and a half minutes. Definitely getting some thermal activity with the birds flying around over the field, so. Something else to keep in mind. All right, so one minute left on the timer. I'm going to make one approach, and then I'm going to go around and then land. So remember on these airplanes, you got to fly them all the way to the ground. So you got to keep that prop spinning all the way down. Got to stay on power all the way to the ground and see if I can land this as well as I landed it before. Because that was my literally my best landing ever. So power on, power on, let it settle. Oop. Tire came off. All right, so uh, let's go check out and see what damage is done. Probably next to nothing, but looks like we had a tire come off. Yep, yeah, just a tire come off. Ah, so a little bit of broken wood here, so a little bit of CA. And again, if you saw the landing, uh, the, uh, the airplane sort of went into a, a yaw event where the wheel was hitting the runway at slightly at a side angle. This is generally why you want some toe in on these airplanes so they track a little bit better on the ground. And again, because of that slight toe in, that's why the damage is here on the inside because we're, we're trying to pull in a little bit as well as that yaw angle. So what we can do is just temporarily put this back on nothing seems to be loose on the tail flexible no damage on the front what's the nose look like all right i think we're going to turn it around and see if we can do a little bit of taxi even on the broken wheel. So when you're taxiing these World War One airplanes, notice how I'm not holding the up elevator because that will dig the tail dragger into the ground and you won't be able to turn. If anything, you want to add a little bit of up. If you got to turn sharp, but again, you got to be careful there. So it's a compromise. Little tricks. All right, so that's the Fokker D6, and she's in fl fully flying condition now. Make sure you guys check out other build series stuff on this model because it was a super fun thing to build and it just has a great presence in the air. Thanks so much for following along, guys. Check out my merch link in the description below. And until next time, Keep building your flying works of art.